Hi, I'm Sam Ben Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Thermal Impedance of Power Switching Devices. We are familiar with the sort of equivalent circuit thermal to the thermal conduction of a device, a MOSFET. And in this equivalent circuit, thermal equivalent circuit, we emulate power by current thermal resistance by resistor or resistance and temperature by voltage. So here we have a case of a, say a MOSFET connected to a heatsink via say an insulator. So we have the junction to case thermal resistance, the case to the heatsink, this will be maybe an insulator here or paste, and then between the, the heatsink and air. And then we clamp it to the temperature of the ambient. So when power is dissipated by the device, it is emulated by the current. The current is passing here, and there are voltage drops which correspond to temperature. And by that, you can actually calculate very easily the temperature of the junction. But what happens if you have a single pulse of power or a pulse strain of power? Is it going to be the same? Well, it's not, because there is a thermal capacity here, so that if you have a single pulse, then temperature will start rising, but the mass is actually absorbing the heat, so it will not reach steady state. This is a steady state representation, and it doesn't hold for a single pulse or actually a train of pulses. And vendors are giving us this chart for the thermal impedance, thermal response says here. And here we have, this is the length of the pulse here, the x-axis, and this is the length of the pulse, this is it. And here is the thermal impedance, or resistance if you wish. And in here, in this particular case, it's, it's given in actual uh, thermal resistance, but in many cases, it's normalized, normalized to the DC value. And this could be either between the junction to case or junction to air. There are different charts that uh, vendors are giving. And here we have, now this parameter here is duty cycle. So this is, for example, a duty cycle of 0.2. So if the uh, pulse length is, uh, say, 100 microseconds, it's a pulse train with a duty cycle of 0.2, then the equivalent um, impedance is then this, uh, say, uh, 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 0 0.4 degree centigrade per watt, as compared to the 1.7 for the DC value. This is already the DC value, but these are the cases of uh, a very long pulse, so it's actually reaching here equilibrium. So this is in actual values of uh, thermal resistance, or impedance, as, it, as I have said, and in some cases it will be normalized. So this is the duty cycle, and this is the special case of a single pulse. So if you have a single pulse of say uh, one millisecond, then the equivalent impedance is 0.1 as compared to the 1.7 because of the heat capacity of the device. So this is a very useful chart that you can, from that, find out what is the situation if you have either a single pulse or you have a sort of continuous uh, pulse train uh, with a given duty cycle. And obviously it always be lower than the DC value because you are not reaching equilibrium. So what is really happening here is that we have some uh, thermal capacity which is emulated by a capacitor and if you have a pulse here, then this capacitor is being charged. And meanwhile, the temperature does not go that high. Eventually, it will reach a steady state, of course, and we'll have the regular model. So the length of the pulse will determine how high are we going to get here. And it really depends on the situation, whether it's a single pulse or, or pulse train. However, the model of a single capacitor is not very accurate and let me show it here by an example. The best way to fit the model is to the single pulse. In the single pulse 
for a short pulse we are here, for a longer pulse we are here. So in fact, um, this is like the temperature rise for a very long pulse. So if you have a very long pulse, then after say uh, 10 microseconds you will be here, after 100 microseconds you will be here, etc. And then eventually a DC you will be here. So if looking here at this uh, single pulse and seeing here the break at about 0.2 seconds and knowing that the DC value, the resistance here is uh, 1.7 ohms, uh, it's degree centigrade per watt, I can sort of fit it to a single RC and here is uh, what I'm getting that the capacitor should be 23 uh, millifarad. By the way, I've here shorted it to ground uh, because uh, uh, really the temperature of, of the case doesn't make any difference in terms of the delta, delta temperature. So this would be the model fitted with a single capacitor and here is what I'm getting, which is nice. Well, it's in general looks about the same, uh, definitely going the same value here, but you'll notice that the beginning is not that hot here because here in the real case it at 10 microseconds starts at 10, 10 volt is here this is the same scale here of time so it means that at the beginning we have a sort of a shorter time constant and only then uh, it's the longer time constant comes into effect so it, it's some, something like that that if you have one time constant and there's another one and in fact uh, probably the best way to do is really to break it into a number of thermal resistances and capacitor and do a fitting to the line. Well I haven't done that although there are some software packages that will do it for you. What I did is something in between. I've sort of broken the capacitor into two parts one here and one here and you see that what I get in this case is rather a very good improvement here because this is now a shorter time constant. This is only one millifarad here. And here, obviously, I'm getting the same thing. And the break here is pretty good. But as you see, I have a wingle here, which doesn't show here. This is because the model is insufficient. There are more time constant to it. The point is that you can fit the behavior to a model with a number of uh, RC blocks and then you can actually model it. Now if you do it right then it should also correspond to the case of a train of pulses but I found that uh, for the case of a uh, pulse train you can get by actually with one capacitor in this particular case does it's not a general thing and I found that say 500 uh, microfarad will actually be sufficient to describe the case of uh, pulse train and here I have some results. So for duty cycle of 0.5 we see that this is pretty good. This is like one and this is also one and the, and the break point is about the same. 0.05 is also duty cycle 0.05 is also uh, pretty good and uh, then uh, 0.02 is not too bad too. So simple model can also be sufficient although the right way to do it is of course to get a, a full model with a number of uh, units of RC elements. Now once you have a model you can actually use it in a simulation and that uh, if you have a device, a MOSFET, you have a current, you have a voltage you calculate the instantaneous power and then produce a current proportional to it and then you put the model in and then on the flight as the simulation go, goes on, this is a time domain simulation of course, uh, you can actually observe the temperature of the junction. This is very nice. Now some vendors have already put in the thermal model inside the SPICE model of the device. This is a case of Infineon. This is a MOSFET uh, made by Infineon. 
and here they have two extra terminals. One is the case, so you can say clamp it to a voltage for determining the case temperature. And this is a sensing uh, terminal that will tell you the, ter the temperature of the junction. Now this particular device, uh, you see uh, even in the mesh, this is actually based on measurement, you see here the thermal impedance has some windows which shows the um, number of uh, time constants involved. It's not a unit, uh, unity time constant here. And this is again the duty cycle and this is uh, already the impedance in uh, Kelvin or degrees centigrade per watt. This device has a, a three or something, uh, here it is, three Kelvin per watt. So this is the DC value. And this device, by the way, has a, so this, this device or this model of the device has already in it the model of the thermal model, you see here it's calculating the instantaneous power, fitting it here. Here you can either clamp it to a voltage or I'll show it later. You can put a heatsink here and then you, on this terminal, measure the temperature uh, of the junction. So here is an example, just uh, I'm fed it with a pulse, current pulse, uh, 30 amp. And here it's going up, the temperature, you see the temperature, this is the voltage of the device, of course RDS on is low, so it's very low, and we see the temperature rising, here is uh, the behavior, so obviously if the pulse will be short, uh, we'll go only to this point, if it is very long, it'll come to steady state, and this value is uh, 20 degrees above ambient, okay, the case. Now, zooming in into the steady state uh, DC situation, I can do some uh, calculation and compare the results here with the data sheet uh, information. For example, RDS on is the voltage which I've measured to be, measured to be here 340 millivolt divided by the current that I have fed, which is 30 amp. I come up with 11 milliohm, which is pretty good like the data sheet. And then the resistance, thermal resistance is the delta, it's about 20 degrees centigrade divided by the power, which comes to be about uh, 1.9 degrees centigrade per watt, while in the data sheet 3.2. So it's sort of, uh, that's okay uh, for it within the spread you'd expect. So what about a uh, pulse train? Well, this model is equally supposed to be okay for the pulses. And here I'm simulating it. I have a pulse of 100 uh, microsecond duty cycle 0.05. And this is a current source of 100 amp. And here it is. This is uh, the source. This is the transistor. And I hooked it up here. It's like the case being at zero degree centigrade, you might say. And here I see the delta um, T, that is the temperature rise above the case. And uh, we see here now, that this is the voltage of the drain. And here we see the temperature of the junction. We see two things. First of all, there is a low time constant. This is the big mass, but then you see that within a pulse, you see that the temperature rises and goes down, rises and goes down, which is kind of uh, uh, expected. And if we zoom in, we see it here, each pulse is sort of causing a increase and then it goes down, increase and goes down. And uh, I haven't checked how accurate is this uh, model, but um, this is an information that you can use while running a spy simulation, which is kind of uh, very convenient. Now, what happens if you have a heat sink? Well, obviously you're adding a mass. If you add a mass, then you have a more, a larger thermal capacity, and uh, this has to be taken into account. 
Again, modeling a heat sink for the thermal capacity, it's not obvious, but uh, as a first approximation, we can do the following. Starting with, with the case, this is the actually a terminal uh, representing the case of the device. We can add the case to heat sink thermal resistance. This will be the insulator or paste that you might have here. And then we can add the thermal resistance, DC, thermal resistance between the heat sink and air. It depends, of course, on the shape mass and obviously on airflow. And then you clamp it to the ambient uh, temperature. But here I've added a thermal capacity. And as a first approximation, you can use the mass of uh, the heat sink and then using the specific heat capacity. So the value of this uh, capacitor will be proportional to the specific heat capacity of the material, say if it's aluminum, it's a 0.9 uh, joule per gram per centigrade and times the mass. So this obviously adds a lot of mass, but there is a thermal resistance till to you get to it. So it's, uh, there's another long time constant involved. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.